Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. I am Kaina Tillat and today I will introduce uh, one interesting experimental technique named as X-ray absorption spectroscopy. So let's learn about the exas. So before introducing uh, what is exas, I want to introduce you people why we need exas to build up the interest for you people in this tool. So for in understanding that why we need exas, let's consider the example. Let's you uh, consider that you want to synthesize one interesting material and you choose some active metals like zinc and iron and you mix your metals with some carbon materials to make your material more conductive. And then after mixing, you apply for some application, you got very good results, what you were expecting. And now uh, the question is this that the material which you synthesized how it really looks like so for this there are a number of possibilities like when you mix the metals with the carbon material the first possibility is like your metals can have located uh, like this and can have the close distance between them but there is also other possibility that uh, when you introduce the metal there is some kind of defect um, happen in your carbon material and there is also other possibility that there is no defect but one metal is very far from the other metal uh, incorporation in your support and the last probability can two metals not only closely related closely uh, located but also uh, have direct metal metal bond between them so now now you are really confused that which one possibility is your case your material look like first one second one or this one or this one which one so that's why we need exas to know that what kind of the material which you synthesized have what kind of appearance and what kind of coordination environment so basically this I gave one very simple example but we can synthesize many other different materials without carbon material like nanoparticles metal oxides and other materials like cough and moth so whatever material you synthesize you need exhaust you need exhaust to know what the material which you synthesized it how it really looks like what is the coordination environment of that material so let's uh, know now uh, let's know what is exas so exas is x-ray absorption spectroscopy which is categorized into two different categories named as x-ray absorption near edge structure zanes and extended x-ray absorption fine structure exas so when you do exas basically you will obtain this kind of graph in which the low uh, the uh, left portion of uh, the graph is named as zanes and the rest of the portion is named as exams and when you will look uh, have a look on the previous published paper you will find the zanes data appearance like these and exams data you will find two different categories for uh, upper one and lower one so upper one is also basically the uh, different kind of plot for the lower one so in this uh, presentation we will focus on this kind so now let's discuss uh, one by one. So let's first discuss the zanes. Zanes, which is the left uh, portion in the graph. Basically, the zanes also further divided into two categories, pre-edge and the rising edge. So first question is, what is the basis of this division? So to uh, uh, give the answer of this question, let's understand the mechanism first. So when the X-ray um, uh, come and strike with your material, it causes the core electron to excite either in unoccupied region or continuum region. So you need to memorize this thing that exhaust is core technique, not valence technique. It means exhaust X-ray is very highly intense that it can penetrate into up to the core electron. It can play with core electron, not valence. So 
when it uh, excite the core electron hole is created here and to fill this hole electrons from the upside come because this whole state is very very unstable state because this is the hole in the core electron this this is very unstable state so um, th uh, the question was what is the basis of the division for the pre edge and the rising edge so uh, the division basis is like if uh, the electron excitation occurs from here to the unoccupied orbitals then it will give rise to pre edge region but if the excitation occurs to the continuum region it will uh, give rise to the rising edge region so this is basically the deviant uh, basis of the deviant for these two um, portions or for Zane's spectra. So now mostly people in uh, this is the basic basis for um, basic basis or you can see say the mechanism behind this. So most of the people interested in uh, how uh, they can interpret this Zane's data what what kind of data or what kind of interpretation they can get from uh, by having a look on the Zane spectra. So let's see this. So basically from the pre edge region we can know about the geometry of the material like if the we can we need to know the um, some standard some reference and also we can uh, when we have a look if there is some uh, sharp peaks we can say that most probably octahedral geometry is present and if the peak split into two portions we can say that most probably square planar geometry is present in this molecule or in the, that material but in most cases we uh, consider the rising edge to um, identify uh, our material coordination environment or whatever we don't consider the pre edge uh, region much in uh, um, interpreting the Zane's data so basically uh, for pre edge region we can interpret the geometry of our material so now let's um, move to the main uh, rising edge region so this is important rising edge region basically give information about the oxidation state so let's suppose you synthesize this material which is shown red color in this spectra the your material have two different kinds of metal iron and cobalt so if your material have two uh, different kind of metals then you need to consider the zane spectra of the two metals separately so here is the cobalt and here is the iron so what you need to do you need to consider first the reference samples of the cobalt and reference sample of the iron what is the reference sample mean here reference sample mean that you need to consider the zane spectra of that samples whose oxidation state already known so that you can compare your synthesized material with that already known oxidation material to know the oxidation state of your material so basically okay one more thing here is if the plot um, is uh, at the lower energy it means that material has low oxidation state if the plot is towards the higher energy then that material has high oxidation state so let's um, uh, consider the simple case here here is the cobalt foil mostly we know all metal foil have zero oxidation states so it is the lowest portion of the of this uh, spectra so it means uh, uh, lowest energy means very low oxidation state so it means it, uh, it has zero oxidation state of course it is it is already known okay and the um, if we see highest energy plot it is the cobalt oxide so it means it has the high energy oxidation state and what where is your material this red color your material peak is located between the uh, zero oxidation state and oxide plus two oxidation state so now you can see you can uh, claim that your material oxidation state is between zero and plus two but still you don't know what is the exact oxidation state of your material so if you really want to know the exact oxidation state actually some in some cases it is not possible just you can uh, you can just claim or you can just guess but if you um, if you are lucky enough you can also take some other uh, materials uh, control or synthesize some control samples and then you can check zane spectra and if your plot peak your synthesized material plot peak match with uh, any of these other material then you can exactly say that this is exact oxidation state of your material like this 
and same if we see the iron spectra same this is the foil peak very low energy because of very low oxidation state zero and oxide here high oxidation state and your material is between and like this you can estimate so but now the question here is maybe you can you can uh, have a question in your mind that from this oxidation state how can we know the coordination environment of uh, some material uh, right so this we can um, know in coming slides before answering that question, I would like to introduce the exafs first. So what is exafs? So as I told you that when an electronic site from here to the unoccupied region or continuum region, Zane's spectra will originate. But is there any region above the continuum region where the electron excite and give the exafs spectra? No, there is no region. So how the exafs spectra can generate? This is the first question. So basically, when the electron excite this 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 happened after that after the ionization this is basically ionization so after the ionization this is the absorbing atom present here but in actual case we know there are some other atoms also present in the neighborhood of that absorbing atom so what is going to happen here when the electron excite from this atom let's suppose that electron is in the form of wave so this electron uh, disturb the electron density of the neighboring atoms can disturb okay which is depicted by the red color here so what happened this red color interfere with the signal of this absorbing atom and this interference basically we can see with in the xf spectra if the interference is constructive we can see the maxima maxima peak upper side and if interference is destructive we can see minima peak downside in the xf spectra but there is also some other case if there is no neighboring atom which like noble gas case then it will be flat there will be nothing but in condensed matter this is not the real case of course there will be the neighboring atoms present and you will get some maxima and minima in xf spectra so basically uh, this is how the exaf spectra give information about the distance of the scattering atoms like how uh, much the distance between the absorber atom and that nearby atom and number of scattering atoms how many atoms present in the neighborhood and identities like is there nitrogen or sulfur or whatever present in the neighborhood okay this is example i got it here um, um, some if uh, you have a, a look uh, in the already published paper for checking the exaf spectra you will find the like uh, some um, kind of appearance like this and here you might find that x axis here and here is different but this is not um, uh, you can convert this into this by using the equation like this and uh, this is how we can interpret the um, uh, coordination environment by the exafs The truth is this, we cannot learn efficiently until we practice some examples, right? So here is some one example for practice. Basically, this is the paper published by our group in Nature.com in 2021. So in this um, paper, um, it is claimed that the uh, material uh, have uh, closely related to metals nickel and cobalt but not only closely related but also directly bounded so how it can be confirmed that this kind of environment is present in this material okay to understand this let's have an example and um, confirm the uh, coordination one by one so first let's have a look on the zane spectra so here for um, checking the oxidation state of the of material efficiently another control sample uh, with, uh, with one metal is also synthesized like this is the zane spectra for nickel this is the zane spectra for cobalt okay so in this nickel case you can see that main material peak blue color is um a more uh, towards higher energy but uh, um, the other material in which no cobalt is present for that material the plot is towards the lower energy so it means the shift happens it means the main material oxidation state is higher as it plot is towards higher energy and in uh, cobalt zane spectra case you can see reverse thing happens here the uh, main material uh, plot shift towards the lower energy as compared to the cobalt single atom a single atom in which no nickel is present so it means the oxidation state of the cobalt decreases in the main material 
so here increase here decrease so it means increase mean what increase mean that uh, electron um, uh, that metal uh, has uh, is, is electron deficient or you can say become electron deficient so it means that electron transfer electron uh, that metal transfer electron to this metal because this metal oxidation state decreases because this metal receives some electron density so this kind of uh, interpretation we can get from zn's data it means that there is some kind of coordination between these two metals that's why they are um, they are um, uh, able to transfer the electrons from one metal to other but this cannot uh, um, exactly tell us that there is a direct bond present between them or there is the three nitrogens present here like like shown here right so so little interpretation you got from here this data right so uh, for more interpretation you need to go to exhaust data so let's go here as i already discussed that when absorbing atom and scattering atom have some interference and then we get exhaust like um, it can tell how which kind of uh, which kind of uh, atom is present in the neighborhood and what is the distance so basically here we can see the distance here is uh, nickel nitrogen and nickel cobalt peak um, is appeared in the exhaust spectra which um, they which uh, from this data then it is easily interpreted that uh, the nickel is associated or coordinated with the nitrogen atom as well as cobalt atom and same in the cobalt uh, exhaust spectra that cobalt is also coordinated with nitrogen atom as well as nickel atom so but the question here is that how uh, uh, we can know that three nitrogen is present here so um this we cannot know easily by looking at this spectra so how can we know let's let's have a look over this so for this we need to do some calculations like um, we can do with different dimer configuration like nitrogen 6 atoms nitrogen 4 atoms and whichever configuration is giving the low r factor value that is good one here low is in 6 case so it means we can say we can claim that here the two metals are bounded with total six nitrogen atoms and individually uh, met one metal is bounded with three nitrogen atoms so this is how we can calculate so here is the conclusion that exhaust is very powerful technique and, and used to identify the local atomic structure zanes basically give information about geometry from pre-edge and oxidation state from edge rising edge and exhausts give information how many neighboring atoms present which kind of neighboring atoms present how far that neighboring atoms present and it is very sensitive tool however it cannot differentiate between the same kind of atoms as i uh, presented in the uh, last slide and so that's why we need some um, fitting data calculations okay so this is all and uh, and this is the end of the presentation thank you for your listening if you have any question you please feel free to ask in the comment section thank you